Um, I'm going to call this meeting to order because we've got enough people to do it. And uh, the first issue is to review and approve the minutes of the meeting of March 2nd, which was a while ago now, but it was our last meeting. There was no April meeting. Does I make a motion to we accept the meeting March 2nd. Uh, I just have two comments. Uh, yep. uh, the 652 motion to for 136 Adams, uh, Replacement of cedar siding with vinyl cedar. What is vinyl cedar? Uh, that's uh, cedar impressions. Oh, okay. But maybe we could make it clearer. Yeah, we should. Okay, we, with, with that amendment, anything uh, else? One other question, uh, community resilience building we, workshop, is that? Could somebody define that? That came and went. I don't remember now. <laughs> so you have is, to look it up. Um, okay, is that the right moniker for whatever it is? Yes. Commu community resilience building? Is that what we call the meeting that we had with um, uh, at Southworth? No, it's not. It has nothing to do with us. This oh. is a meeting that was organized by the town of Dartmouth. Oh, yes. Uh-huh. What just got amended? It had something to do with vinyl siding? Yeah, uh, 136 Adams. It says cedar to... to Vinyl cedar. Vinyl cedar. It should say to cedar impressions, maybe, or to something like that. It makes it clear that it's vinyl substitute synthetic cedar shingles see cedar look alike yeah vinyl vinyl i don't know cedar yeah. uh judy had the right nomenclature let's use what she just said it's called cedar impressions it's a trade name yeah okay. let's use that okay are we, accepting the, are we accepting the meeting minutes for march we, 2nd i have a i have an amendment and in the uh, statement about the Obadiah Benevolent Fund, it's brown, Obadiah Brown, not Obadiah Nye. Where's that, Bob? It's in the back, uh, it's in the second page. Top of the second page. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. Obadiah Brown. Mm-hmm. The only thing I have is at the bottom when it adjourns, get rid of that H. That's a Scrivener's error. He can do that. I, I didn't hear what you said, Diana. H, the letter H, H15 meeting adjourned, period. Then there's a letter H there that doesn't belong. Oh. Uh, Jordan, you can see it, can't you? I think I noticed it when it went out. Hey, Susan. <laughs> okay. So now we have um, sufficient comments on the minutes. Does anybody no. wish to second the motion? Okay. I second the motion. Okay. Is there any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. As the... Uh, minutes taker here i'm curious about this window that says dartmouth community media too who is on the other end of that peter who peter peter chase access your microphone and it's it's on but it says it's on and phil okay. uh, what's your last name phil baker oh, my, so oh, oh that's <laughs> philip okay yeah with one l been a while, hasn't it? It's very hard to make sense of these things. <laughs> the audio is pretty, pretty tough. Okay. okay. I think I have everybody in the minutes now who's here. Thank you. Can we move on to 17 Travers Street? Yes. Is that the uh, home that's having the uh, windows done? 
No, no. that is the home that has the second story addition. And I sent the form around and he sent full set of plans and pictures. No, there's a correction there. That's not a second floor addition. It's a bump out in the back. I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah. Right. They need to correct that. Uh, question, what, what year was this built? It doesn't say on the uh, demo request. Because the appraiser was a little vague. It's about two or three years beyond um, 75 years old. Really? So, wow. George, okay. are you talking about this? The Travis Street house. Yes, yeah. I'm talking directly about the Travis Street, yes. Thank yeah. you. Tell us about it and what you intend to do. Well, first of all, I think the reason of the meeting is to verify whether or not it is a historical property. Because the building department has not established that fact because based on the date when the property was uh, erected, they said anything over that date has to be approved by you all, give uh, whether or not it is historic or not. So I don't really know whether or not it's historic, and I guess the purpose of the meeting to establish that fact, first of all, before we proceed with anything. The building department told me that house was built two or three years before the limit. Is that the case, that it was, it's about 78 years old? That is correct, yes. If it is 78 years old, it falls under the bylaw. Then we have to discuss it. Okay, well, I wasn't clear by the fact that they stated whether or not it was historic. So I, uh, I digressed in that in the fact that uh, basically it wasn't clear whether or not it was historic. So I thought the purpose of the meeting was to state whether or not it's historic. So we can proceed. We will decide whether it is historic. If we decide it is historic, then we have to have a public meeting. If we decide okay. it is not historic for the purposes of your restoration, then we can vote to let you go ahead or not. The not means we declare it historic. If we okay, vote gotcha. yes, it doesn't matter it's, we call it not historic for the purposes of this bylaw because that's the way the bylaw is written. But it's for the purposes of the bylaw. Uh, in this case, it probably, to my way of thinking, applies to the house. But let's hear what anybody else may have to say. You want to do a bump out, you need some more space. Yeah, basically, from the, uh, the, the premise of the property, I just acquired it rather recently. And from my opinion, looking through the house, both in and out, it doesn't appear to have anything inside of the house, which is historic. It looked like the house was uh, renovated rather recently. I don't have any supporting documents to that, but the actual premises would indicate to me that it has been. And uh, that's what the building department suggested to me, that in 2000 and something, it had exactly. been renovated. Yeah. Exactly. So it's been renovated, and I don't know if you were aware of the renovations and at that point whether or not you uh, had rendered historic or not, but from looking at it, there is no, to me, historical facts on the property or, or remaining uh, 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 parts that would suggest to me or anyone that it is historic because all of the materials that has been used on it is all modern materials, shingles, siding, sheetrock, lighting fixtures, flooring, the whole nine yards of the property. So I guess my question today would be, based on the fact that all this has been done to it, what would be the problem in bumping it out and not going up? We're not going up. So I think, and you can correct me if I'm wrong in this, but my interpretation or my belief of the historical facts of uh, a property is that you can't deface the front of the property, which we're not. We're simply going in the back of the property and which leaves the front totally remaining the same look, if it is in fact deemed to be historic. The bylaw says any one side of the house. It does not say just the front. Uh, in this case, your house probably, it might be very historic if it's 78 years old, if it were designed by a very fancy architect or be very stylish in some other way, uh, okay. it's up to this commission to make the decision whether they think there's any reason to save 
that mm -hmm. house as it is presently. Okay. Here so I would like to invite the members of the commission to make any comments. <clears throat> I, you know, I think looking at the house, it, uh, it's so borderline um, in terms of um, the style. It was probably built right after World War II, and there's nothing, um, I don't think there's, a, it has any historic features, and that we probably shouldn't, I wouldn't spend a lot of time getting into a discussion about this. I think we should just, I would vote to go ahead and allow the... Uh, Are you making a motion? I am making a motion that we declare this house not historic for purposes Second of the motion. bylaw and allow them to go ahead. I second the motion. Philip Baker seconds the motion. Is there any further discussion on this issue from the members of the commission? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, Aye. All opposed? Hearing none opposed, um, it is passed. We will notify the building department tomorrow morning that you are free to get a permit to go ahead with your work. Um, I expect we'll have to, I'll have to do it by email or Philip can do it by, you can't do it by email. I'll do it by email, notify the building department and they will issue a permit for you to go ahead with your um, project. Thank you, appreciate it. Okay, well, uh, we appreciate your coming before us. In this case, uh, this is one of those cases that is borderline, but depending on the particular house, a house that's 75 years old can be quite significant. In your case, I'm sorry to say it probably isn't terribly significant. Well, I appreciate that either way you put it. <laughs> okay, <laughs> thank you for good doing luck, all right, and thanks a lot. Doing it this way. Okay, thank you. Have a good evening, people. You don't thank have you. to stay with us if you don't want to, but you're welcome to. It's a public meeting. It's 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 not that I don't like the company, but I think I'd like to have some supper. Oh, okay. <laughs> Go to it then. All right, you have a good evening. Take care. Okay. All righty. The next thing on our agenda is Diane bringing us up to date on the MHC grant. Do you realize that Diane is on the moon tonight? Is she? Look at her. I need to unmute. Okay. Yes. Um, okay. Where in the world are you, Diane? <laughs> no, she put um, up a background. Joined the meeting. His name is Christopher Shea. So is he just a member of the public who wants to listen in? To apparently, our meeting. apparently, it's a public meeting. Yeah, I know, but um, we um, would like to hear from you about the update on the MHC grant. I'm getting to it. <laughs> so, um, I would say, let me try to remember this at the end of um, March, early April. Uh, we received, we meaning Judy Lund, myself, and Linda DeRoche, this is our little subcommittee, uh, we received batch one of uh, the draft form B. Uh, so that comprised of, I want to say about 17 or 20. Uh, so we spent uh, a a few weeks, or no, actually, we didn't spend that long. It felt that way. Uh, we uh, reviewed it together and going back and forth over email about our comments and questions. And subsequent to that, on April 9th, uh, for the subcommittee, I submitted our comments to the public archaeology lab. Uh, and we had about eight pages of comments. If anybody's interested in getting a copy of those comments, just let me know and I'll be happy to send it. Uh, and then on May 1, uh, we received uh, from Ginny Adams, who's the project manager from PAL, uh, their response to our comments. So, um, 
we're, we're expecting batch two, I would say, they, they wanted an extra week, so by next week, maybe. Um, but I haven't yet fully digested all of their remarks from our comments at this point. Uh, Linda DeRoche did uh, review them and Judy reviewed them too. I just need to go back and try to re-familiarize myself. <laughs> What were your comments, uh, Diane? Oh, the comments? Oh, uh, God, eight pages of comments having to do with... On the commenting on the Form Bs you received? Yeah, commenting on their content of the forms. But you can sum it up, I think, pretty easily. Uh, well, I can say, uh, first of all, we were dissatisfied. And we spent, you know, uh, over a week of our time uh, trying to do our own research in order for us to go back to PAL to have some intelligent comments um, to give to them. I mean, there were too many instances where uh, they indicated that uh, it would take too much time to do deed research. So what they basically adopted as an approach, which is, you know, a generalized statement here, that if they found the house on an 1852 walling map or 1856 or 58, that they basically dated the house as being before that date. Now, our expectations were that we would get some deed research and more specific. Are you about kidding me? The, uh, you know, the history uh, of, of the property. So that is kind of a generalization of uh, so, some of the concerns that, you know, that we had. I mean, I in other words, you didn't, you weren't satisfied with the potential accuracy of these forms. Exactly. They did not do much more than Casella did, which is what we were trying to improve upon. So, um, so you're going to have guidelines to for them to follow. They have guidelines, Mass Historical Commission, if anybody remembers uh, a year ago that uh, this proposal required that the consultants follow the MHC guidelines, which were several pages long. So there is no mystery about what the guidelines are and what the work entails. Uh, but I feel, because Dartmouth is very challenging, I guess, or was challenging for them, that it, um, this work has proven to be a little bit overwhelming. And maybe we have high standards, but those standards are exactly Mass Historical Commission standards. Uh, they use different terminology, uh, and Linda can speak for herself about this, uh, that was kind of new to us, but maybe the terminology, if everybody understands what it means, uh, won't be a problem. And that had to do with uh, I guess calling a house, the exterior of a house, uh, a bay. I have to go back and look. I do have my document in front of me here. I think it's, it's sufficient to say that we were considerably dissatisfied and have gone back to them and told them so. Right. And we documented what we were dissatisfied about. Uh, so, as I said, that took a lot of our time and that was okay. Uh, to, you know, to go through each of these forms line by line. Of them. 
And so they got that. And another thing that we asked for them to do, which apparently isn't part of the norm, is that we wanted to see the batch, you know, the work by batches, not all of, you know, not all 90 or not all 85 at once, because that gives us an opportunity to kind of um, take, you know, 15, 20 at a time to devote to review those, provide comments, get their response from our comments. Uh, typically, uh, I understand that when uh, the consulting firm produces these drafts, uh, they give it to us, the client, and they also send the same to Mass Historical. So um, typically, it's Mass Historical reviewing simultaneously with the Historical Commission here review. And we believe that it was a more efficient approach to have us kind of take that first look because who understands our historic buildings better than we do? So um, this is where we're at. I mean, it'll get done. <laughs> one way or another, but um, this is kind of where we're at at the moment. Yeah, and we're still awaiting MHC's comments on batch one. Well, I don't know that they've sent them yet to MHC. Yeah. They asked uh, us if it was okay to do that. Yeah, and so we'll wait and see. Yes. Okay. So it's ongoing, it's interesting. Uh, so we gave them general comments about the entire work product that we and then we went um, property by property and then included more specific yeah. comments to each property. Okay, thank you. I think that's enough for now. How about CPC? Has thank anything you. happened in CPC? CPC. My goodness, it's a good thing I got, I uh, prepared myself for this meeting. Yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, the CPC meeting that I attended was on March 10th. And some of you may remember at our DHC meeting before that time, uh, you gave input to um, the Aponagansett playground equipment. So I did share some of DHC's concerns about the aesthetics of the playground equipment. And uh, in addition to being told that the park and rec people are going to decide what colors to use, <laughs> uh, they did acknowledge that they try to make sure that their play equipment kind of blends into the landscape. That's great. great. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Bob Harding talked about DHAS. You've been busy. Okay. Well, obviously we haven't had any meetings, but we're, we're still working on the, the major project that we've got on the, on our table, which is the, transcription of the Quaker records. We're making very good headway on that. Um, but we're still gated by the number of volunteers that we have to do the reviewing. So we're out looking for ways to recruit more volunteers for reviewing the transcriptions. And uh, we're doing that by uh, one of the groups we're looking to work with is the Rhode Island Genealogical Society. Um, and we've got some connections there. And it looks like they're going to post some things on their website and on their Facebook page to help us recruit people. We're also um, actively discussing publicizing or publishing two books on the records that were transcribed uh, with a, a very good publishing company. 
and we're pretty excited about that. Other than that, uh, there's not a lot going on, but while I've got the microphone and your attention, I should say that for later on in the new, new business, there's a, a, an old house on State Road known as, to me as the Goodwin House, which is right next to where the Quaker Meeting House that was moved to Deerfield used to sit. And it looks like that, we found a picture postcard of that house, an old postcard. And I noticed in a recent picture that it's for sale. And I got a feeling that it's gonna be the next Smith Mills house to be demolished. If, um, if that's okay with us, I guess it's gonna happen. But I just put us, uh, put us on notice that uh, it's gonna be coming up soon. Bob? Yes. Do you have an address for that house? I mean, I, I do, but I don't have it at the tip of my tongue. It's and next, I'll, I'll next to it. the corn, next to the corner house on Slocum Road. It's set way back from the road, next yeah, to the site where back. the meeting house was. It's like six fifty-seven or something of that nature. It's the house that was moved there from an unknown location a long time ago, and there is a good history of that house at least since it's been there, written by Marion, was her name Smith? It was a, a history of that house in the newspaper. Um, and that house, that place has been for sale before, and we fought off a big battle with, Wal not Walmart, Walgreens. And uh, so it'll be interesting to see what happens. It's been used sort of as a boarding house and uh, I'm told it's not in very good shape inside, but if it comes up for demolition, we ought to have a visit. There's an old barn that goes with it. There's a fair amount of land. And at one time, it, it uh, butted two different Quaker meeting houses. One, one on its east side and one to the uh, southeast side. That was on top of the road. And, uh, it's, Quite an interesting old house. We have a few stories that go with it from some mm -hmm. old residents too. Was that a tavern at one time? No, that's not the one that was the tavern. <laughs> okay. I'm the tavern was a different one. one, tavern, one tavern is closer to the street. Yeah, okay. Yeah, the tavern house has been demolished uh, along with many others, of course. Are you talking about the house that's near Harvest Shoebox? No, it's next door to the realtor that's on the corner of Slocum Road and Route 6. No, Tucker Road. Tucker, Tucker Road. Road. Oh, no, that's not. Tucker. No, Slocum. No. Tucker, Tucker Road. Slocum, set way back. And is it Help You Sells on the corner? Well, it's, it's Tucker Slocum, Road. Isn't it Tucker Road? It's Tucker, Tucker Road. Road. Okay, I stand corrected for the moment. The, uh, on our website, the DHS. Which one you mean? On the DHS website, there's a photograph uh, of the house we're talking about. It's was, sit way back, right? Yeah, yeah sit, way yeah. back. Yeah. And there's yeah. often a car in the front of it for sale. Yeah, oh, I know what you're talking about. It was also like a. Uh, it, it was known like a kitchen yeah. post out front. Yes. Hmm. Okay. Okay. We'll watch it. Yeah. Uh, next, I guess, is signage. The first issue, and I don't quite know how we're going to deal with it, except I'm going to talk to the town if you will vote. Uh, the garrison sign, as you know, has been finished and put up. And because Signature Sign not wants money on hand, I paid with my credit card $140 for the new lettering that went on the sign at the garrison. I would like to be compensated for that. I don't know whether they will accept your voice vote or whether we'll have to do something else. Usually we have to sign a bill, but these are unusual times. Uh, it is um, up there and um, it's what we voted on to put on that sign. And uh, so I would just assume be compensated for $140, and I can email Sue Gaducci, uh, Sue Gaducci, uh, Sue in the treasurer. Make a motion that we co compensate you 
My voice vote. I second. I Phil Baker second. <laughs> uh, is there any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Okay. Pound sign. What's the state of the pound sign, Bob? Well, here it is. It's ready to go. <laughs> I don't know if you can oh, see oh, the media. Oh. All right. <laughs> Fill in the blanks. I <clears throat> I haven't heard back from Signature. Uh, I tried them again last week to let me know what's going on, if I could drop the sign off, if uh, 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 and I, I want a final layout with the new wording, the final wording. I haven't oh, received that. Um, but they're probably closed at the moment. Well, this is, you know, yeah. Yeah. Uh, this is be, before uh, Governor Baker announced the, uh, the, the, the total shutdown. So I'll just keep trying them. Yeah, I think that's, you know, these are strange times. The sign's ready to go, though. Okay. And I can say the same thing about Peyton Aaron Village. I have tried a couple of times to reach David Russell. David Russell was president of the Businessmen's Association, but he's not working either. So I left another message today and he never got back to me. But the Peyton Aaron Village sign that says, welcome to historic Peyton Aaron was supposed to be put back on what we call the Woodhouse Shop building. It has not been put up yet. And I don't have contact for the guy who owns that building. So I've been working through David Russell because the Businessmen's Association paid for the lettering the last time. But again, David's not working or not in the office. So therefore, there we are. That should take about 40 seconds to reinstall. Yes, it should. And it's been months. Exactly. They were going to fix up the letters. I don't know if they have. Uh, because I haven't heard anything, and it's what I want to get from David as a contact for the guy who owns the building, and if not, I'll go through the town. Uh, That's Scott Sylvia's brother. Yeah, David, maybe? I think so. Yeah, but I don't know how to reach him. Well, no, he's got a, he's got a, um, there's a copy of his application in the files with all his info in it. Aha, uh -huh, I'll find it soon as I can get into town hall. <laughs> there you go. Okay. Judy, are you, uh, have you been into town hall since this whole thing started? No. Has anybody been in our office? No. Is anybody allowed in our office? No. Like if one of us needed to go there? No. No. Well, I haven't specifically said, I really need to reach something or other, can I go in there? Lynn is in there every day. I don't know who else is still working. Uh, the girls in the building department are alternating. Bev's there one day, uh, Sue's there the other day. So they're semi-open, but they're taking all their applications by email. So continuing oh. on signs, just because it's a sign, even though I put it further down, the Hicksville sign was repaired by the minister's son and looks pretty good. Um, and that's really all I have to say about that one. Anything with the insurance on that? Philip? That's a difficult issue. I asked the minister if he would apply because he was applying for the wall as well. And he said that he didn't get any money for the sign. And being not as forceful as I might, I didn't say, well, why not? Why didn't you do it? Why don't you redo it? Because he immediately said, my son will fix the sign. And so I'm not sure. He said the only money they got was for the wall. And the wall is beautiful. Looks like nothing ever happened. And oh, that, that all is well that ends well, as they say. His son did a pretty good job. The one issue and maybe it's a task for Philip when the weather gets good. The signposts are kind of banged up and could use some white paint, but it's a job for somebody in the spring just to get some white paint on those posts because they got a little bit banged up. So they have some areas where there's no paint on them and the guy did not repaint them. I but was gonna, I was gonna 
This is Philip. I was going to pick up some copper caps for the top of the poles, but I wasn't sure if um, the uh, Historic Commission would approve that. I'm not sure copper caps are appropriate, but there is one wooden cap missing. It was a fiberglass, and it was um, it was knocked off the um, sign when I went out there to take pictures. So yeah, so we need a new cap, and we need some white, a little tiny can of white paint to fix up the post. Are these like what you'd find? The, I don't. I haven't seen this sign. Is it like the kind of uh, post that you'd see on a chain link fence with a cone on top? No, they're four by fours. Oh, okay, okay. They're good wooden sign posts, uh, and they're still pretty sturdy. And they had um, wooden caps that you buy at Lowe's or Home Depot, and one of them is missing. But I don't think copper caps are appropriate. Uh, the wood stanchions, as well as the caps, will age at the same rate, and so I don't think we need copper caps on it. Okay, fine. I would draw the... But if when this is over and you can go shopping, you want to do those things, just let us know. Uh, the MHC meeting we all went to and it seemed to go well. So let's get on to the demo review update. Jamie, do you want to say something? Well, I think the... Um memo that I submitted to you and cohorts pretty much summarized it so as to where we stand. So I really have nothing further to add. Well, I think this commission needs to talk about, you were considering a rather substantial rewrite and maybe we ought to put that off while you send that around to all our members of the commission. But at our meeting back in March, we said there were four things that should be included in that rewrite. And I don't believe those were included in what you did. That's not accurate. They were, there's an attempt to, there's an attempt to include them. I've just worked on, I've just worked on a draft so far. So they were considered and included in the draft. Then why don't you send that around to everyone and we'll look at it in the meanwhile and hopefully We'll meet in person next month, but I'm not going to count on it um, because everything is good now. Yes. Okay. So you will send it around. I will. Okay. Sue Gaducci, you want to talk about 248 Bakerville Road? Yes, please. Um, I think that. Uh, I had sent a, an email to a number of the members of the Historical Commission because roughly two weeks ago, uh, because I live on Bakerville Road, um, I was aware of the activity um, as far as the excavating of the site at 248 Bakerville. And when they start, initially started to clear the site, it exposed a cut granite foundation um, on the corner of Meeting House Lane and Bakerville Road. When I had the opportunity, I looked at the 1852 map and the, I, what I, who I believe to be the original um, owner of that property was an E. Ellis. Uh, uh, since I've discovered that the first name is Ephraim. Um, I felt uh, I had called uh, Samuel Steen, who was the person that represented the, the he, he represent, the, he's the developer, and he met with you apparently in October and you granted the, the ability for them to demo the house, which was not that, uh, it's on that site, but it was not this particular foundation. Um, so I called him because I had a note, I had actually asked Diane because I was on my way to work that if she could go and take some photographs of the foundation, which I believe she circulated to all the members of the commission. 
Um, in the meantime, I called him to ask if I could go and take some measurements. And he said that he would have to get permission from the owner to allow me to take the measurements. Either the day after or the day after that, as I went by, they had pulled all of the foundation stones out of the hole, cellar hole, and had filled in, had filled it all in. I, That's I, nice. I, I'm a little, I'm a little lost for words. I know that I have a, a strong interest because I happen to live down the road, but I guess maybe what we, what, and I'm not, I mean, I'm not telling you what to do, but maybe in now that the demo delay is being reviewed and possibly um, edited in some way that we need, that you need to have a mechanism to allow for further exploration if this should happen again. Because I think what he did, I, I wasn't happy with what he did. And, and you, if anybody hasn't driven by the site, it's, it's, it's awful. He clear cut the, I, I won't go into that, but at any rate, um, I just felt like it was a, a, a really, a real missed opportunity. Well, I expect the missed opportunity was we did not do a full site visit before we considered the house because they only asked permission put to demolish the house. We but the, pro the problem is, is that I know people that have lived on this road for 30 years and nobody knew that that cellar hole was there. Exactly. Yeah. And they found it. And thank heaven, Diane got some pictures because it doesn't surprise me in the least that that developer did what he did. Sam Steen, as you know, is the brother of our former historical commission member. Well, that and that alone I found kind of shocking that she actually sat on the historical commission and her brother, you know, has been doing this type of work that he's doing. She works for him too. Uh, can I speak in defense of this project? When we uh, entertained it last October, we never contemplated that we would do a site visit to basically do an archaeological survey on what's underground. We don't do that historically, no pun intended. We basically approached it from the standpoint of uh, the demolition of that house. And um, what you and I, Sue, talked about was maybe in the future, uh, should such an application come before us, that is viewed to be an historically significant site like farmland. Uh, and L Linda DeRoche had shared with some of us, you know, this map. It's a <clears throat> walling map, 1858, which came in handy, by the way, uh, when we were looking at uh, the Form B drafts. And uh, you could see on that map, uh, you know, an Ellis who um, <clears throat> owned that property at one time. So uh, I guess I'm not sure how we could avoid this in the future uh, because of the boundaries that we have in terms of the demolition delay bylaw. Uh, he, when he came, you know, he talked about his development, I guess, how many, like, is that 13 acres or 18 acres? And they're building 11. 10 acres. There? 10. It's 10 acres. Okay, thank you. 10 acres. 
Uh, so we do know that was this in front of the planning board? You know, he went in front of the planning board. Some of the abutters were not happy with that development going there. So this is a complicated um, situation uh, that, you know, I'm not sure I have the answer to. Perhaps, perhaps it's, um, you know, we wouldn't be interested in potentially surveying the ground underneath the house where they're doing a, putting on an addition or changing their windows or aluminum siding, but perhaps if we know there's gonna be a major demolition and clear cutting and um, redevelopment that part of the stipulation is that if anything pops up. Well, I have some observations on this as well, if I may. Um, there, it couldn't have been known that there were historic foundations there because they were underground. But once they were known, it would seem to me that those expert people going out to look at the site could make a recommendation to the building department to issue a stop work order. This is the way around things when we're not empowered by the demolition delay bylaw. Uh, if those expert in historic preservation tell the building department, we think we've found something, we feel that there should be a stop work order until it's determined whether it's a historic foundation structure, et cetera. That's, I think, a workable and reasonable remedy to a situation like this. It's certainly a possibility. The question is whether we have authority and whether we can build in that authority. Well, I would say, why wouldn't you have why wouldn't you have the powers as a town historical commission to go to the building department and request a stop work order? It's up to him to then visit the site and you confer with him or whomever's there representing the commission to say, look, this is what we feel. Uh, please, uh, please sort of uh, comply with our request. It's as seemingly simple as that, I would say. It sounds simple, but the building department will not do that unless- Why, why won't they do that? The bylaw, because we had the same issue with the fire department on Bridge Street. And the fire department on Bridge Street took down a whole porch, which is a significant portion of the facade of that building, and they have not replaced it. And the building department said, I can't do anything about it because there is no law that allows me to do it. I have to have a law. There is a law that pertains to burial sites, but I don't know if there is a law that pertains to archeological sites and we need to look. Um, I would think that any building site, the, I, this is just a guess based on the work I've done in Washington, DC, if concerned members of the community or those expert in historic preservation would say that uh, we'd like you to consider a stop work order, I would think of any building site, a building department would have that authority. <clears throat> um, let me add to that, Jamie. I think you know you have a legitimate uh, suggestion here that the historical commission uh, could try to pursue in the future. Yeah. Uh, I don't think it should be related to the demo delay bylaw. Nor do there I. There needs to be another, um, an, another way to sort of persuade the building department uh, to mm. issue a stop work order to give us a chance to take those measurements that Sue wanted to do. In this case, it wouldn't have worked. They knocked the thing down less than 24 hours later. You couldn't have received the stop well, work order to uh, stop that by that. The thing is, uh, when I went, after Sue contacted myself, she contacted uh, Judy. Who else did you contact initially? Bob I Harding. think I included Bob Harding in that email and maybe Jordan, I'm not sure. And you, yeah. you contacted me as well. Yes, yeah, because right. I wanted you to be in the loop too. Uh, when I went over there, it was like this, you know, rainy day, and I took photos. And then um, 
I needed to kind of step back and try to figure out where how this all started and then uh, realizing that we had approved the demolition in October. And so they spent, you know, they took all this time because that was in October and then they only started uh, doing this uh, excavation work, I would say during the month of April. Uh, it certainly wouldn't hurt, would not have hurt. I didn't think about it at the time. Uh, and of course, nobody can walk into the building department at that time. So we were all kind of relying on emails and phone calls. It might have been worth pursuing at least to just say, we found this significant foundation that we just need to have an opportunity to review more closely and do, you know, do drawings, uh, not to stop them, <clears throat> from doing it necessarily, but kind of like a timeout, which is akin to the demolition delay when we say we need to study this and we need to find other alternatives to demolition. But for that house and that property, the train already left the station and it was only in April that Sue brought it to our attention that there was a foundation there that they had uncovered. What, what number, happened? Bakerville, okay. is this? 248. Thank you. Uh, when I was late on this rainy day, I took my life in my hands because in the middle of backhoes and big trucks, working on the property, I was just trying to, you know, take photographs and figure out what was going on there. Is that the DNRT parking lot? No. 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 When we worked with Jim McGratney over his house, we put some conditions on his demolition, like allowing people to come in and measure and to do things. And it might be that we would come to a solution if on a site like this, they were asking about the house and it might've been that we needed to go to the planning board because they were only asking about the house. They weren't asking about anything else on the property. Uh, but uh, if in the future, when we see something like this going on, perhaps there's a mechanism also to say, Yes, we'll allow you to demolish the house, but sh should you find something else on these 10 acres, you must let us know before you demolish it. I'd, I'd like to make a comment, if I could. It's to, in order to prevent something like this from happening in the future, which is really what is uh, an important issue, we may not be able to do anything about this past one, but in the future, if we get a recommendation for demolition, besides just looking at their plans, maybe somebody should take a quick look at the old maps to see if they can get some clues as to how old the house really is in, in that location. And perhaps do a little quick work to, to get ready to be uh, more than casual about passing it along to go ahead and do things. Uh, we don't have that many hard teeth in our bylaw, but we do have the delay that we can have. And I, I think if we get some, some opportunity to do a little more research, we may find things that we wouldn't find otherwise, like this foundation that was found down on Bakerville Road. We would have had to dig. So no, the there was no digging. No digging. They pulled the brush away from the top of the cellar hole. There was an actual cellar hole right there. So there wasn't any digging. It was just completely covered in brush. So nobody would have seen it unless they had taken the brush away. But to Bob's point, if anybody had looked at that map either th that site is under the ownership of ephraim ellis 1852 1856 1858 and in 1871 it goes to his son thomas 
Well, I think Bob's point is, is oh, I'm sorry. That's I'm, all right. And at that point, the house shifts to the south. Did anybody go into that crawl space of the house that you gave the, that you approved the demo? No. no. In, in no. truth, we dropped the ball on that one. Because, you know, nobody's perfect. And I'm not, and I'm not, I'm, I'm not being, I'm being critical in that I'm looking for a way to address this in the future. Right. And I don't think we need to be perfect. I think we need to be competent. And in Dartmouth, you can just assume pretty much if it's not the house that's historic, it might very well, it's very well sits on a cultural landscape. So therefore, it's, um, it behooves us to look at these maps. Good point, Bob, that we do this. And somebody does a little diligence um, and some homework. And so we're not caught off guard. Now, the horse has sort of left the barn on this one, but I think we can learn from this one to be uh, positive about it. But I think we need to take advantage of what leverage and mechanics we do have. If our demolition delay bylaw is weak, then we look to the building department and let's sort out and see if stop work orders can be issued, if he has the power if the building department does have the power to do such a thing. We just need, he'll, he knows the laws, he knows the ordinances, he works with them every day. It's a simple ask, I think it'll be a simple answer. And if the answer is in our favor, we use that going forward when we do sometimes miss things. We, uh, I agree with we that. Have, I know uh, competence. In the bylaw, the uh, demolition bylaw refers not just to house buildings, but to structures. And that's intended to include uh, stone, old stone, historic stone walls, foundations, other outbuildings, and so on. And it might, uh, we might be able to, in a rewrite of the bylaw, um, uh, parenthetically describe other structures as uh, pre existing stone walls and, or old foundations, that sort of thing. And that the historic, um, commission has to be notified if, um, if, if it's the intent of a builder or an owner to demolish a pre-existing structure, such as a stone wall or a foundation, because yes. that, that, wor that wording is already in the bylaw. The wording is for structure, but the structure has to hold something. And that's the argument we have. say that. Yes, it does. It defines a structure as holding something. And we went that dance with Perry because we could only convince him that the radar tower was a structure under the bylaw because it held Colonel Green's water at one time. And so we real that's one thing that we need to include in the things that we update. But Judy, we've, we've uh, weighed in on uh, stone walls uh, on scenic roads that have been- uh, That's a different issue altogether. That's scenic roads that fall under the planning board, but we have weighed in on scenic walls, but they're not our purview. Well, and to add to, to that, between the old foundation and the, found, the other foundation, the foundation of the house that was demolished was also a hand dug well which they also filled in without allowing anybody to take any photographs or do any of that. And down further um, west, there was a silo foundation. So there are three features that were, nobody was aware of that they proceeded to just fill in and be done with it. Okay. And I think what we need to agree to in the future is to look at those maps, but also, you know, we don't get these demolition requests until the Wednesday before our Monday meeting. And then that behooves us, well, it's a different time now, but it did behoove us to make a little visit to town hall to review those demo applications ahead of time before our Monday meeting. And let's be honest about this, sometimes 
were acting on demo delay matters, having just seen it the night of our meeting, and that is not okay. Uh, well, Diane and Sue, do you feel that uh, Mr. Steen proceeded more quickly as soon as he realized you were interested in examining the site more closely? Yes, he did. <laughs> uh, I can only, I can only, uh, you know, I don't know for sure, but it was pretty suspicious, especially since he didn't return my phone call. And I spoke very to suspicious. Him. Yeah. Well, we have a lot of things to learn from this experience. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, things get to you on Wednesday. Um, you could buy, go by the building department at any time, but that's part of what we need to think about when we think about the whole timing issue that uh, is uh, one of the things we were going to discuss in updating the bylaw. Um, people can come in Wednesday morning and file a demo request. And I go in at afternoon because that's the deadline. And so we really have a pretty short window from the time that I file to pick up some of those things. So it just means we have to be better on our toes, I'm afraid. But had we had a better form B on that property, the problem with that property is the building department said that house was built in 1898, I think, and we, none of us had done the research to see that the property had had a bigger history than that. And uh, so we need to be better, frankly. We missed this one. And we, we need- We should have, this. this is Philip Baker uh, speaking here. May I speak? Yeah. They should be a separate little box on the demo, application that has a protest section where someone who is on the commission can protest something that is running amiss and not be um, crucified for it. Oh, God. Well, that's Jamie, that's Jamie's stop order, essentially. Okay, and so then it should be, it, it should happen, um, and planned for our next meeting. So this way, if someone comes before us and tries to pull a fast one, then they notice on the application that there is a protest uh, section that one of our commission members can file, which would keep these people honest. Well, I don't, I'm not sure that we can do that on the forum, but we can certainly do it at our meeting. Okay. Judy. Can I, yep. can I say something uh, regarding the, the checking the maps? I think uh, given the response to that idea, I would add that the, the maps are all available on our website. Yes. And uh, in some cases, they're even indexed with yes. uh, the names and so forth. And it would be quite easy to do the checking. If we, and I think if we just make it a, an early step if you if you delay the amount of time between when a request for demolition is submitted and when we have to hear it, so give us at least a day or two to check the map. That would help. Yes, we could we could um, give ourselves more than Wednesday to uh, Monday. Well, thank you. I have to leave. I have some cats. I have to feed uh, dinner to them. So. Yeah. Uh, I, I will. Um, I will uh, send um, that. that um, nice, nice to see you, Jamie. Thank you. Th same, Hi, right, Jamie. Yeah. And, and I will. Time to consider is is a good idea. All right. All right. I'm leaving meeting. Ciao. Ciao. Bye. Bye. Okay. Ciao. I don't have anything more to say. I fed my cat before I. I, I have one more thing, <laughs> Judy. No. I have one. One more thing. I would like to thank DCTV. This is our first meeting on Zoom. I think it went pretty pretty well. And I think everybody is to be congratulated for partaking. And I think DCTV deserves a 
heads up for the good work, making making it happen, and making it happen pretty smoothly too. Yay, Peter! Thank you, Peter. Thank you, Peter. <laughs> I have another Zoom meeting tomorrow night. Guess what that one is? Oh, PC. God. See, yep. <laughs> well, uh, is there any other business we need to transact tonight? No, I make a motion that the meeting be adjourned. Oh, uh, wait, you have the little di library on the new business. Okay. You didn't say anything right. about we, that. It's the little North Dartmouth library. All I was going to say is that I have tried to reach the senior center and I keep leaving phone messages and no one answers them. Well, the, the senior center is not open. Well, I realize that, but they should be pay, paying attention to their voicemail, and they are well, not. You need to talk to Maria Connor. She's the one you I'm can't trying. get hold of. I'm trying, I but I don't get answers. What is up with that? I don't know. You know who might have a phone number? I do. Sue Marlin. Ah, Sue does. Okay, email me, Sue, would you? I will. I will. One more, can I ask, can I suggest one more thing? Yeah. We should, uh, you should have a um, bill uh, copied at your home and we'll just swing by there and sign it. Oh God, no. I'm going to try to get away without it. If it's necessary, we'll do something like that. Or I can send it around and you can each sign a single copy and, and send it back to me. And I believe that they are, they're allowing for signatures through email. Okay. Uh, it, the, the amount, when the amount of money is the kind of money you're talking about, it can't, it's not material according to the accountants. It's not no. enough money to worry about. And once we finish this payment for this sign, we can then sign off on the CPC grant and return the extra money to them. And they want the money back because there's a significant amount of money we didn't spend on that project. So uh, I will raise that issue when I uh, talk about it. Although, Judy, the DHC does accept gifts. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay, anything else? Are we going to adjourn? Somebody already really raised the issue and it's not a debatable. I seconded. Okay, all in favor. Aye. Aye.